we see QR codes everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. For some, they're an evil, an entry to fake information, scams and viruses. Well, in general, that's actually not true. But you do need to be aware of the perception that that might be true and provide clues that your QR codes are in fact genuine. For others, QR codes are able to carry enormous amounts of data. This isn't true. And when faced with the need to provide more information than can fit on a product label or a desire to interact with consumers, a lot of people think, I know, I'll add a QR code to my product. Job done. Well, up to a point. But what experience do you want your consumers to have when they scan your QR code? And is it just for consumers or can it be useful for business partners as well? Are you in control? Is somebody else in control? And does GS1 have a standard that means that that QR code that leads to more information, that allows you to interact with your consumers and your business partners, can it soon replace the 1D barcode, go beep at the checkout, and thus save you space on the pack? Let's find out. Takayuki Nagaya and Masahiro Hara. Really should be household names. They're the two engineers who first developed the Quick Response or QR code. This ubiquitous symbol that you recognize by the prominent squares in three of the corners. Uh, why three corners and not all four? Well, so even if it's upside down or on its side, those three squares still define the two-dimensional grid into which individual data points can be positioned. The question is, what do QR codes actually do? Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but QR codes don't do anything. They simply encode text. This one encodes the numbers zero to nine. If you scan it, it's really not much different than me writing the numbers zero to nine on a piece of paper and handing it to you. And yet, if you scan this QR code with your phone, you're probably going to be invited to add details of our office in Brussels to your contacts. If you visit our office in Brussels and you scan this QR code, you'll be connected to the guest Wi-Fi. And if you scan this QR code, no matter where you are, you'll be taken to the standards page on the GS1 website. It's not the QR code that's doing this. It's the computer that the camera is attached to that is doing this because the information in those QR codes, the text, is structured. And it's the structure that the computer recognizes and acts on according to whatever that structure is. The top here, that's the structure you use to provide Wi-Fi configuration details. The big block in the middle, that's how you encode contact details. You don't need me to tell you that uh, the one at the bottom there, that's a web address, a URL. So if you're going to add a QR code to your product, be aware that what you're actually adding is a little bit of structured data. And you need to be clear in what it is that you want to achieve by doing that. If you want consumers or business partners to scan your product, what do you want them to experience? And how does all that fit into your business process? Those are the kind of questions that you need to ask yourself. Now, in the GS1 world, we're normally talking about a consumer scanning a product to get more information, something like this. The first thing to say is that what you see on the screen is not in the QR code. The pictures, the text, the colors, none of that is actually in the QR code, which simply contains a URL. The phone recognizes that it's a URL, opens the web browser, and takes you to that page. But hang on, what that URL is matters. When you scan a QR code that contains a URL, your phone will show it to you, or at least as much of it as will fit on the screen. And people have learnt, as we mentioned right at the start of this talk, that not all URLs are safe. So a good proportion of your users will look and see whether that URL looks right. They'll want some reassurance that they can trust that URL before they open it up. And despite this, it's actually very common that the URL in a QR code is not where you end up. Now, to understand that, you need to understand the concept of redirection. 
It's common on the web generally, but it's really common in QR codes. And I'll give you an example. This QR code contains a short URL, quizme slash HFI. And if you scan this with your phone, you'll be taken to quizme slash HFI, but you won't stay there. You'll be redirected to a different URL, the one for the page about this fictitious product that we use in these demos. And the Quizme service, by the way, that's one set up by an old colleague of mine for him and his friends. It's not a production grade service. Please don't use it. But you can see the attraction of using short URLs because the shorter the text in the QR code, the smaller the QR code. It's as simple as that. The top one here contains that short Quizme slash HFI URL. The bottom one contains the longer Dal Giardino URL. So the question immediately becomes, how much can I fit in the QR code? There is no simple answer to that because it depends on a number of different factors. But the basic truth is that you should keep your URL as short as possible as long as it meets your business needs. Focus on what you need to include there to support the particular business processes. So how about this? This is a GS1 digital link URI, a special kind of URL that contains GS1 identifiers that can be read without an online lookup and that can act as a gateway to online information. I want to show you some of its features. First of all, it's on the brand's own domain name, not some other domain name. The product says Del Giardino, the domain name says Del Giardino. Consumers will see that when they scan the product and see it on the screen, and that's going to give them some confidence that this link is not going to take them to somewhere they don't want to go. It's got the GTIN, the product identifier, right there, and that structure is as precisely defined as how you put Wi-Fi configuration details or contact details in a QR code. And that's how scanners increasingly can recognize GS1 identifiers and pass them on to the backend system exactly in the way they do today with traditional 1D barcodes. All the major scanner manufacturers are working on making that true in the very near future. So that's your brand's domain name and your GS1 identifiers in a QR code that goes beep at the checkout and that consumers can scan. Now, this one just has the GTIN, but you can add in more. Batch numbers, they're really important for things like stock control and product recalls. Serial numbers that, among other things, helps you keep in contact with specific customers long after the checkout has gone beep. And for things like deposit return schemes, so that the deposit is only returned once. Expiry dates, incredibly powerful. Include them in your barcode and you can support things like dynamic pricing. As the expiry date approaches, you can discount the product and that can make a huge difference uh, in the amount of product wastage. And if the expiry date has actually passed, your point of sale scanner can be programmed to refuse the sale. Adding those data elements to the QR code on the pack using the GS1 digital link syntax has real business advantages. And it's not just product identifiers. GS1's location identifiers, asset identifiers, serialized shipping container codes, and more. They can all be included in a QR code and used just like any other GS1 barcode. For emphasis, those GS1 identifiers can be extracted without an online lookup. Your scanner won't fail if the internet goes down. But it's also a URL. That's the beauty of it. It's two things in one. It can point to more information about a product, maybe a promotion, usage instructions, a digital product passport, reviews, you name it. It's a bunch of GS1 identifiers and a URL to take you online. One final thing, we actually recommend that rather than just using the brand's domain name, you actually set up what's called a subdomain. We suggest ID dot, but it can in fact be anything. The reason is that this QR code identifies the product. The product here, fictitious product, contains rice and mushrooms and it weighs 411 grams. That's what the GS1 digital link in the QR code identifies. Electronic information contains ones and zeros and is measured in bytes. They're not the same. 
So use the concept of redirection to go from the products identifier to the electronic information about it. That information may come from your website or from a partner organization like a digital agency. It doesn't matter. You can redirect from your product to anywhere online you're in control. And using a subdomain logically separates the two, which makes it easy to manage the product identifiers and supply chain operations separately from uh, the marketing driven information. Of course, you can update those redirects at any time. And the full GS1 Digital Link Standard actually allows you to link to multiple sources of information from different places at the same time. That's handy because, of course, consumers are all different. This is Sophie and Nico. They just had a baby. Now, they keep having to buy things for the baby and they're worried about the amount of rubbish they're creating. Is it recyclable? Is it biodegradable? That's their issue. Alice is celiac. She cannot eat gluten. So when she's shopping, no matter how much of a hurry she's in, the number one question she has is, does this contain gluten? Because if it does, she can't buy it. Robert is concerned with sustainability and country of origin. And if possible, he'd really like the information in French, which is not the language on the product. Different consumers want different things. And using the GS1 Digital Link system, brand owners can provide answers to those specific questions. Apps can ask those specific questions. And the whole thing works because it's based on GS1 identifiers, GS1 standards, and long established web technologies. In summary, QR codes just contain text. But that text can be structured and computers can recognize and act on that structure. URLs in QR codes very often redirect from one place to another. And GS1 Digital Link uses these features to provide structured text that can be recognized by scanners without an online lookup, but when used online, can redirect from the product to one or more sources of electronic information about it to answer any number of questions from consumers and business partners. So before you put a QR code on your product, make sure you know what's in it who controls it, and that it supports all your business processes in a way that gives you maximum value for that precious on-pack real estate. After all that, I don't know about you, I need to lie down. Yeah.